like to call to order the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. It's both being transportation related. And then we have a item on reviewing warrant articles and then just approval of minutes. So we have TAC here, the Transportation Advisory Committee, to give us a report on, I think, first the Summer Street intersections and the optimization of the traffic signals. Sure. And then we're going to talk about the Minuteman bike trail intersection at Mill Street. So if you guys want to come up, sure. introduce yourselves. Uh, Jeff Minks Tudis uh, from the TAC and uh, also on the, uh, the former Sims property uh, working group. Thank you for coming. I'm Rich Turcott, a co chair of TAC. Nice to meet you, Rich. Hey, Rich. How are you? Good. And I represent you and the planning department on TAC, Laura, Laura Wiener. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I don't know if you want to give us a, a summary of. Uh, your recommendations. Like we've all had the report, I think. It would be a brief summary to, to get us up to speed on sure. what tax thinking. Sure. We had um, a meeting um, with the working group members, and um, you know, Jake, Jake is here with his, him and his consultant, um, who prepared the analysis of the intersection on Summer Sims Road, um, Hemlock Street, Rattle Street, that, that um, coordinated intersections, and uh, they evaluated uh, existing conditions as well as determined um, future uh, timing and phasing improvements at that intersection uh, that can be made. And um, a couple things on existing conditions they found um, wasn't operating well was the, um, the signal detector loop on the Summer Street um, southbound approach uh, was being detected essentially every every cycle, whether a vehicle was uh, there or not, which means there's a lot of waste of time in the intersection, um, which needs to be uh, repaired or fixed. And when that's fixed, you don't have all that lost time uh, in the intersection to be made more uh, efficient. Um, Besides that, they identified uh, signal timings that would be different than are out there uh, now. It runs on a 132nd um, cycle length in the morning, uh, sorry, 114 in the morning. Recommend to go to 130 and you know, give extra time to the summer street eastbound westbound approaches, which would essentially reduce the delay to that traffic. So if you go through there now, uh, you're seeing some significant really shouldn't be there. Um, and with those changes, you need to improve uh, level of service as the rating. Uh, the traffic engineers give to uh, intersections like a report card, A being the best and F being failure. Um, so the condition would improve from level of service E, which um, you know, is um, a congested uh, condition, not uh, uncommon around here, uh, but would improve to level of service D. Uh, with these changes, which is fairly uh, significant. And um, also, the, uh, the, these timing changes can be improved for the off-peak hours. So um, the off-peak would, would uh, experience benefits of, um, of those uh, changes. There's a couple other minor things. Um, there is some um, lost time, all the clearance time that can be um, um, eliminated in the intersection, which they recommended, uh, which would also improve the, uh, the time for vehicles or give more green time uh, to vehicles on Summer Street. So, um, with those improvements, um, the intersection would actually, like I said, improve to level service B in the morning and in the afternoon, improve from level service D to C. So, it would be a, a one grade change, which is, like I said, is pretty significant. Um, the one thing they were going to check was a uh, potential uh, right turn on red coming out of Sims. Um, if it works on a the right turn on red, um, so if the, if the vehicle stopped momentarily and made a right turn on red, wouldn't trip the signal for that approach. So if you're, you come down 
uh, waiting at Sims to make a right turn, if you can go after uh, within five seconds or so, that phase wouldn't be actuated. So it would help operations. So it would keep that. Summer Street going. It would keep Summer Street going. Right. If you had to wait more than you know five or ten seconds, whatever it's set at, then yeah, you get you get the actuation. But um, so that that's one thing um, the engineer was following up to look at that that operation. So if there's two or three cars waiting, right. then it would. It would. You trip it. You trip it. You'd, you get, trip it. you'd get that. Um, that's that phase. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. Anything at Mill Street? Um, really not. Uh, some of there was very minor uh, changing the, the yellow time from um, four to three seconds, which is very minor. Um, just some uh, optimization of timing, mostly in the off peak hours. I think uh, than, than the peak hours. So there, some, there were some minor changes. It would improve, but it, it's not going to be that noticeable. Uh, it wouldn't change the level service grade at that intersection. So yes, there are optimization changes. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not as significant as on, on uh, you know, Summer and Sims. So the, the, work, the working group endorsed um, these, these recommended improvements. Does the board have any questions? Um, any parts? Just, Jeff, could you, um, the first thing that you talked about was the loop detector, mm -hmm. is that right? So in a sense, that's, Seeing cars that aren't really there is that a, a sort of a uh, sure okay yeah, sort of yeah okay and that and so right now it's is it seeing the traffic uh, or, or the, the the known traffic on on Summer Street uh, and causing that light to, to uh, go it was on Sims uh, it's on Sims, Sims so, okay uh, which is the side the side street yeah so uh, I was I was seeing cars that weren't that weren't there and giving that that green time to Sims although. May be no demand. Okay. So that's that's pretty inefficient. Yep. Great. Thanks. Could you just describe the right on red again? Yeah. There's uh, sure. There's uh, it, it it is legal to make a right on red, but um, if you don't have this um, delay in detection, it'll mm -hmm. it'll detect every car that can make a right on red. Okay. So if one car comes down and makes a right on red. Um, it would detect it and give that phase, even though it, it may take that right on red before you get the, the green light, mm -hmm. right? So again, that's another form of kind of wasted, uh, wasted time. Okay. If, if, if you don't have that delay, you know, delay on that. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, another form of detection uh, that can help operations. Okay, good. Any uh, no, I think I'm all set. Just in the memo, is it the recommendations are in the front and then also in the end? That that's the uh, yeah. Let's see. If I just want to make sure. The parts I, are in the end. I have a I have a report uh, dated the 17th, uh, January 17th. So there's they have the ones from January 28th. Yeah. Okay, so I, I I think they have the recommendations for the, the front of the report also. So in the front, yeah. it's also the same thing. So I don't have to vote. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 we're just trying to move the meat to the front so you didn't have to read through all the gotcha. description. That's what I did, yeah. but I want to make sure <laughs> yeah. I didn't miss anything on the second one. That's okay. great that they could jump from a E to a D. Yeah, it's that's pretty good. Yeah. And a C to a and a D, D to, to a C. C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is significant. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And everything's being done just with the signals. There's nothing other than fixing the loop detector that's under the paving. Yeah, there's no geometric changes. Uh, you talked about uh, a minor uh, paving striping, but um, the, the no physical, uh, you know, quick, uh, rather no geometric changes to the roadway. Okay. Yeah. Good. So I'll just, I just want to review for people what the condition said, and because this is a change from the way the condition was written. Um, this is um, under phase two, following the issu issuance of a CO. This was how it was supposed to, how we conceived of it early on, that um, after the COs were issued for 100 units, um, the developer would provide $40,000 letter of credit to be drawn on by the town to fund follow-up survey of traffic conditions. So this is, we had decided due to some complaints of neighbors and also the fact that there was one piece of it that was very clearly malfunctioning, the, the loop detectors, 
that it made more sense to just do it now using projections for the traffic. And so this, if you accept this, the idea is that you, that $40,000 letter of credit would never come into being, that, that this condition would be deemed satisfied. And any, I think any future changes would not be expensive to make. They would just be minor um, changes to the traffic light itself. Right. If the engineering report is paid for by the developer. And this the, these kind of changes are not very expensive. The town can handle this in the future. When will the changes be made if we accept your recommendation? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know the uh, the schedule to come through at D, you know, right away. DW. Right away. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> it's pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gonna snow tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. So, Carol, should we be making a taking a vote, making a motion to approve? I think you ought to, given that the the condition is a little different. Just to be clear, um, and so that the record will show that the board considered and voted on changing the condition. Mm -hmm. no, actually, yeah, it's just kind of a no-brainer, but mm -hmm. you should vote on okay. it. Before we uh, talk about a vote, though, in terms of the recommendations that um, the working group uh, that Jeff has headed up uh, has given us, the cost for those, are those paid for by the town or are those coming in? Out of the forty thousand dollar set aside that was going to go into the letter of credit. Uh, neither, because there was no set aside. Okay. It was never made. The developers paying for it. The developers paying for it. Okay. In order to get their okay. final approval. So the town's not paying for anything. Okay. Right, Jake. Right. <laughs> okay. Checking. <laughs> Jake, do you want to introduce yourself for the people at home? <laughs> Since the camera's um, going to be on you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Upton, um, developer of Fit Sims at, um, gosh, what's our address now? Uh, awesome. Sim Circle. Any other questions? So this was prepared by Sobel uh, with your. With your review, how, how, did, the, how did, the, did you review it or did you work? No, no, we re re reviewed it. Um, well, we met twice. First yeah. we met with him before he did it yeah. and told him what we wanted to see. And, and Jake was there too. And then we met with him with his recommendations and made just a few tweaks. So this represents your recommendation as well? Or uh, we, well, we, yeah, we, we endorse the, re the recommendation. I mean, that's what we were expecting. Right. That type of recommendation. Yep. There was new data, I didn't mention, there's new data collected in traffic volumes for this uh, evaluation also. So if there's no more questions, I could entertain a motion, which it looks like. I'm scribbling. You're scribbling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll move that the board accept the traffic mitigation recommendations for the Sims Road, Summer Street intersection, and the Summer Street, Mill Street intersection, uh, and that we uh, release from the original special permit conditions the requirement of a $40,000 letter of credit. Carol, can you use the full intersection name? I know it's Summer Bridal Hemlock Sims. <laughs> and then <laughs> Summer Mill Cutter. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me see. come back to that after I get the, the, okay. the release the, um, from the special the permit conditions, the uh, $40,000 escrow. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'll just take it from the two headers. Yeah. I'll copy it from the two and headers. Perfect. And, and, and that beginning, just to add, uh, prepared by Green International. Right, and the date, January 28. So it references this document. Okay. Did you get all that? Almost. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So our next item yeah, is also with, uh, with TAC. And we, want, we have recommendations from you for the intersection of the Minuteman bike path and Mill Street. Right. So there's a few uh, working group members who are joining us, uh, Stefan Miller and uh, Chris Tonkin. Put a back. Thank you for joining us. Really, you know, we see the operation on the, uh, the bike path. But, um, uh, so we met before, I don't know, six weeks ago or so, and gave you an update of uh, the operation of the, uh, the flashing beacon in the crossing. And um, the flashing beacon is still being uh, evaluated with DPW mm -hmm. and um, the, co the contractor and installer. So we're going to be doing some tests um, to see if the, the battery power is and the, um, the communication between the two signals is appropriate. And um, so we don't we don't know the uh, you know the results of those tests yet. But um, DPW is uh, is looking at that okay. and expect some findings shortly. Okay. So that's that's the. Um, the part of the operation of the flat the flashing beacon itself. And you asked us to identify any type of uh, amenities that might help with the uh, safety and operations in, in addition to that. And we came up with um, a list of measures that um, really is consistent with um, a recent study that was done by a tool engineering of the entire uh, path, uh, Bedford, Lexington, Arlington. They came up with these type of measures to make um, the crossings more consistent mm -hmm. throughout the, uh, the, the entire trail. And we used that as a, as a guide and that added a, uh, you know, a, few, a few things to that as well, as, uh, in addition to that. So um, I'll just go through this, uh, this list and we can, we can talk about uh, any of these in more detail. Uh, a lot of these are um, you know, pavement markings and, and signage. Um, and, and a lot of them are typically probably familiar with them. There's some attach there's an attachment and a, uh, a, a photo also. Um, the first one is a uh, place advanced stop ahead signs on the trail as you're approaching the street. So there are, are stop signs, so we don't have an advanced uh, stop ahead sign on, on the trail. Uh, install, there are, like I said, there are stop signs. Uh, install reflective ring tape on the stop sign poles. Uh, it's a fairly new addition to the MUTCD. You may see this in some communities. Uh, I don't think we have an Arlington right now, but the pole itself, you now are allowed to put reflective red tape on the pole, so it's a uh, visibility uh, benefit. You can see those from further away. Sometimes you can see the pole leaves with the sign, you know, depending on where you are, so we thought that was good. Um, there's a uh, Mill Street street sign missing on the top of the westbound approach on the trail. Um, that's uh, informational, it would be good to have. Uh, paint stop bars on both approaches of the trail to Mill Street and pedestrian crosswalks. We think that would be a good, good, um, good visual cue, uh, especially for bicyclists as they're coming up with good places in the intersection. So you have to paint check paint stop bars. bars. Let's see. On the, on on the, the trail. trail. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah, the bars. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, uh, it's a white line. Yeah, yeah. got it. You think, but, um, install and maintain uh, two ground mounted plastic reflective bollards. Essentially, what's used there today, um, this memo, do you have a, a picture of this? I've got a color Wait. picture if you want the color one. We thought those are good because it, it, yeah, it, it tends to help um, you know, slow. Um, especially bicycles down as they're approaching uh, the intersection. You can see those are um, had some wear and tear, the ones in the picture, uh, the dented up. So we were suggesting those on, on, on both approaches, but also a, a supply of those also. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure how long they last, um, but there is um, you know, another short. Is there any point inside them that if you hit them, they're going to 
not they fall no not those yeah they're supposed to be break away so you, you get this but right now they don't kill you if you no they're not, they're not supposed to uh, have sand in them or anything like yeah, that gotcha. uh, they're supposed to if you hit them uh, break away um, not, not create any type of uh, mm -hmm. object that would uh, you know be hard a uh, fixed object Along with that, um, there's really no uh, pavement marking associated with that now. Um, you can see in the photo, there's, um, there's, a, there's a center line and some faded arrows, but we're recommending, um, this, was, this was attached, and I, I have this mm -hmm. if you want to see it, it's in the color, but um, they call it obstruction pavement marking. Really, it's um, pavement marking to show that, um, that, that there's something ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, again, we have some consistency along the path at other, other locations, so the crossing. So we thought that was a good idea. Um, we painted the directional pavement marking arrows. In this photo, you can barely see the faded arrows um, there that shows the, the direction, just to make that clear. You're supposed to be on the right side. It's pickled traffic uh, to repaint those. Install signage on both trail approaches uh, to Mill Street, indicating uh, Nassau. So there's some, um, it's, it's not hard and fast what, what the law um, actually is with, um, you know, in a, a bike and a crosswalk if you have to dismount. There's some, uh, it's a gray area. I, I brought these to show you, which is actually on the Cape Cod Trail. Mm -hmm. And we're not suggesting that sign exactly right now. Um, that's 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 one type of sign that says have to dismount. We're not not actually sure that the um, if a bicycle is at a pedestrian crosswalk, they have to dismount. If it's at a trail, it's 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 not clear. So we're not sure if the sign is is the correct sign that we would use. Another one may be. Um, Bicycles must stop. Um, that type of sign might be more appropriate. Um, so, I'm not I'm not suggesting the actual language right now um, mm -hmm. until we have further discussion uh, with Pat and back about uh, what 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 the best signage should be. We feel there should be some some signage there. Um, that's that's probably not not the right one, but it's one one example of some of the folks in the state had. Uh, Chris or Stephanie, you want to add anything to that? I think that's a very good sign. Okay. I mean, the bollards, um, you know, they're there partly to um, prevent also cars driving up the bikeway, which has been known to happen if there have to be ones there. However, they are um, drivable over by um, emergency vehicles and they can be removed for snow plows and things like that. So that's why they're not more solid. Well, how, do they, they're not more solid. how do they remove them? For snow I really plows? don't know. They're screwed, they're they're screwed, screwed in, in, I believe. They're yeah. screwed in, so yeah. emergency vehicles could do that. Well, they can or just drive, drive over them if they want. Yeah. 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 So that's why you want to get 100 or a certain yeah. quantity of extra ones. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. And there was an emergency vehicle back in the fall that I, I saw use, use the path, so it does, yeah, it does yeah. happen. Um, that's uh, one of the reasons that we didn't um, really consider a permanent um, type, mm -hmm. type barrier there um, because we understand Lexington is, is, is removing theirs, uh, but that, that's one of the reasons uh, for doing that. There are gates. Gates, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Do we, have, uh, Sorry. do we have bollards at other uh, intersections on the Arlington portion of the bike path? Yeah. They're supposed to be. They're supposed to be. <laughs> but the problem is, is that the, the DPW runs over them yeah. and destroys them, and then they're not replaced. I, when we originally put the plastic ones in, the hollow plastic ones in, they were supposed to have bought a supply. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they have them and they're not putting them in, or they don't have them. Do you have any idea as to how frequently they get run over or... Uh... It doesn't. It doesn't take long yeah. after they put them in. So we go through them at quite a pace, it, it, presuming that we're actually putting them back out there. Yeah, I mean, if we could get 
the vehicles that are driving up and down the path to remove them instead of running over them, then they would last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. So from what you're able to determine, this is the damage that you see here is not so much bicyclists running no. into it, it's other uh, That's right. vehicles. Yeah. Okay. Bicyclists, a bicycle wouldn't make that much damage to that pole. Yeah, okay. I think so. so I'm trying to figure that one out. Because <coughs> originally when the, the uh, bikeway was first built, there were actually metal poles at all these intersections. Mm -hmm. And I think there might be one remaining at the Sunrise Assisted Living. There's a footpath. The ramp. It's a ramp that yeah. goes yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. They were removed. They, they had keys in them so they could actually take them out. The emergency vehicles were supposed to have keys, but they were decided that actually they were a hazard because they, they constricted the, um, the bike path a little bit. And if you hit one of those things, you're on a bike or uh, even running or anything, it, it hurts. It hurts. It, it was yeah. solid metal. So um, and it had no give in it. So the reflective plastic is, you know, it, it's softer, it's replaceable. It's also vis a visible thing because it has a reflective uh, panels on it at night it's, um, or in the evening. It's, mm -hmm. it's if you have lights on your bike uh, or cars, you can see it. I mean, it comes up much more easily. Okay. The crosswalk that you have at the top of the page here, paint pedestrian crosswalks across the trail at sidewalks on both sides. Mm -hmm. So is that going to go perpendicular to the road crosswalk, basically? It's going to go Correct. in line with the sidewalk? Correct. Yeah, you, okay. yeah if you look in that, yeah, that photo, you can mm -hmm. right across the, or match the, side, you know, connect the sidewalk sides. Yeah. Okay. Right. That'll bring a lot more visibility, though. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Did the working committee, um, or the working group, look at the reconfiguration? I know that's a lot more expensive, but... While we have an escrow, if we're going to do anything uh, big there. It, um, yeah, um, there was an idea of creating um, a band chicane. Right. Or, mm -hmm. They'd have to go outside of the right of way of the, mm -hmm. the bike path, so we didn't put that much uh, consideration okay. into it. Okay. But the right of way it would go into would be the Ulta Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, that couldn't just be a an easement through that property. Because we all, I think last time we met in December, we all thought that was a worthy design it has, it has some benefits. modification to look into. It has some benefits. Um, yeah. It's a little more complex, obviously. It's a little more yeah. complex. Yeah. approach the property owner too. We right. would have to approach the property owner. Well, oh, this escrow was part of their, um, it's the same property owner. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we tell them this is one of the solutions, we can extend this um, deadline end of March, right? Didn't we decide that last time? Or didn't we say that it's a deadline, but it's not, it's our deadline? It's your, yeah, there's no reason why the board couldn't extend it. If we needed to. Unless I think it's a they would have to agree, agree. I mean, it's their money, and the condition said for a year. I mean, I think we would need to talk to them about it. I'm sure they would do it. I don't. That I'm not even sure who to talk to about it. Yeah, it that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. But but I'm happy to make that effort. I'll start with Addie, and then she'll tell me who to talk to. So yeah. she'll still talk to me. And if that's still worthy, I know it complicates things, but. If we're going to complicate it, now would be the time, right? Yeah. Is the that the only? Solution. Is that the only easement you um, you think would be needed to I, consider that? I, you know, I, I, I can't say. We didn't look at any kind of detail, yeah. uh, property lines or, or so forth. We'd have to, um, you know, do, do a layout. You know, of, uh, what it would be. And well, maybe if we could do a layout and get an estimate. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the intersection, there is no room at all to do anything. Mm -hmm. It should be pointed out. So we'd only be able to do it on one side? Yes. It, because there's, a, there's like a fence hard up against it, and there's a driveway hard right. up against the other side. There's absolutely no wiggle space at all. Mm -hmm. But at least we could do it on the one side. Is that the worst side out of the two? Well, the issue, I think, is you have people coming downhill. Mm. So we'd have some momentum. On the, but on the other side, going uh, up, going westbound, 
there's no visibility until you actually get to the intersection because of the, the, the hedge on and the building on one side. Um, so I think you know that that not much you can do there. Not much on the west on the westbound side. There's just not yeah. much room. Yeah, you can see it on the yeah. east. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Who owns the trees there that are so overgrown? That could be pruned for visibility. I don't know. We don't know. That might be another consideration is to include some tree pruning as one of the recommendations and approach the property owner there, find out if it's their tree. Maybe look at the property line where it falls. If there's any kind of topographical survey, we can see those trees. It's like a business. It's probably easier to just approach them and ask them. It's a contractor. It's a contractor. Yeah. Well, the I think the town would have a right to yeah. uh, maintain any vegetation that uh, you know, needs uh, right. the trail. Right. So I, 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 I don't think they, they have may have to ask. Okay. Looking at this picture, that, that looks like if visibility is really poor coming uphill there, that, that could definitely be done. Mm -hmm. The hedges could be pruned down lower if they're impeding visibility. They probably aren't, though. They're pretty low already, it looks like. So, uh, Jeff, are you uh, continuing to explore what the right uh, sign language is for the uh, Massachusetts law for pedestrians and bicyclists portion of the recommendation? Yeah, we, 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 have, we have to do that. Okay. Just, uh, we have an agreement um, on what, what that should be. Okay. It's, um, it's, like I said, it's a green area. Uh, Mass Massachusetts, and it's not uh, some of some of these things are pretty uh, standard. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I mean, TCD or so forth. But um, you can see there's a lot of variation at different locations so, across the state. So, mm -hmm. does it just the Minuteman Trail? So you could, I suppose, do the same thing that the Cape Cod Trail does. Um, maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Same size. Okay. Users, maybe. What did the tool report tell you on that? Did they tell you anything? The tool design? Chris, do you remember? Stop the balance on that? I think yeah. it just stops. Just there wasn't stop even signs. There wasn't yeah. a, a must stop, even. It was just the, the regular traffic stop sign. They actually recommended that at smaller streets with very little vehicular traffic, that the stop sign be put for the vehicles and the bicycles have the through way. Mm -hmm. And at major streets, it'd be the opposite. But I don't that think that's anywhere bicycle in stop, but they're affected. That's yeah. just the recommendation. We, yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have any. That's, that's all, not any not yeah. location. They're yeah. all major yeah, streets. Sure. In yeah. So the sign could just say state law uh, stop. Request to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's if you just have the stop sign, yeah. it'll say it's that's a state for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we've got a stop sign. We've got a stop. We're gonna have a stop bar. We have fl a flashing red. Uh, right. This <laughs> means <laughs> 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 we're gonna have red on the post. <laughs> Reflective red. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Making right. bicycles get off and walk. If that's not clearly the state law. Sounds like it's a bit of an well, imposition. I, we're a little bit concerned about that one because we just don't think it's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. and I, I I'm very against putting any signs up that are not going to be followed because then the ones you want to be followed, like stop, why should I stop? You yeah. know, it's sort of... Um, if you can get them just to stop, stop, that's what you need to do. Then they'll see whether they can go. That would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. getting them to stop sounds like the major thing. Okay. And, you know, by casual observation, when we... You know, Stephen and I have gone out and watched this intersection. Most people stop. You know, like most cars stop. There's always the ones that don't, but they're the ones who tend to get reported and seen. But most cyclists do stop. Okay. Is, is the chicane going to be worth it? I mean, when you're. Yeah, that was my question. Uh, we, we haven't discussed it in any kind of detail. Do they use it anywhere else on the path, or if, if there are some kind of conventions that are kind of getting, you mentioned Lexington Avenue and other areas, Lexington, Lexington. town of Lexington, I should say. Right. Is it 
fall um, into any category yeah. that way? Or? Do you want me to tell a little bit? Uh, the person who knows most about this can't, couldn't make it tonight. He's down in DC. But he knows what the regulations are. But um, I think there was a reconfiguring of the intersection, one of the intersections in Lexington that kind of made if a less obvious straight across. Um, it's on Woburn Street, Woburn Street, but it was configured to decrease the length of the crossing. Yes. It was a diagonal crossing oh, for a bicycle path, which was very long. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, made a right angle in the path to make a perpendicular. Oh, okay. And it definitely works to slow you down. Yeah. But no that's doubt about a that. much, they've got a lot of space to do it there. Yeah. We don't have well, that. they took away a sidewalk. Yeah. So that's the only precedence on the trail currently. Would, would TAC be willing to look into the working group? Look into what that layout could be, whether it makes sense to do it on just one side versus both sides? I mean, we can look at it as a concept. Um, right. That's, that's, that's about it. Um, and, um, How much of an easement maybe we'd need to get? Yeah, we could, we could I mean, we're not uh, like designers per se, uh, but just the concept level. Right. You know, to show what the, the layout would would be and what the in, impact would be to adjacent property. And even whether you feel it would be worthy after you look at the layout. Right. It hasn't, it hasn't I can tell you, it hasn't gone much other than uh, Scott Smith uh, drawing this. So <laughs> here's an idea. And we, mm -hmm. we really haven't taken it any right. further than that. So we, we'd have to... Um, do you have base plans there. and things of what you need to, to try to do a um, concept sketch? I, we don't. I don't have a base plan right now. There's no plans of that intersection. Well, I guess you could use an aerial photo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can talk to DPW or yeah. you know, Google Maps. Google Maps pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have that good orthos. We have good orthos from 2012. GIS. Yeah. 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 Those, those are good. And we're still waiting on the flashing yellow to find out more information there. Right. What that might end up costing. That all comes out of the 40,000 escrow, correct? Mm -hmm. Any changes like this would come out of the 40,000. Right. I mean, line painting is pretty inexpensive. That's so fair. Yeah. So the ballers, I imagine, are fairly inexpensive it's not, also. It's not a big ticket item, so. Yeah, so, right. unless the, um, the change to the flashing yellow is a substantial price, there may be enough money to do a reconfiguration if it's, if it's found to be worthy. Right. No point in doing it if it's not worthy. Yeah. So um, I just want to understand. So you're look, uh, asking us to uh, look into this, uh, the idea of a chicane uh, for the eastbound approach um, to see um, if it makes sense, uh, the what the benefits may be and what the impacts uh, may be to the adjacent property. Correct. Okay. Any other requests? Well, and then just uh, give us your sort of final leading on what Massachusetts law requires with the, uh, with that uh, approaching <coughs> intersection signage. Everything else seems like it makes a lot of sense and could help, even if the chicane isn't found worthy. Oh, yeah, we, we think these, these things can help. Um, you know, each one helps to some degree. Mm -hmm. Can someone find out from the DPW whether they have more of those plastic yeah. things mm -hmm. and if they're just not replacing them? And maybe if they can start to remove them rather than drive over them? <coughs> Wayne would be open to that, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not Wayne that's hitting me. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to that with Wayne. Wayne could talk to whoever's in charge of whoever's in charge of us anyway. <laughs> maybe. OK. And with this, um, this additional uh, concept, what type of schedule um, would you like us to be on? Well, if we can extend this other schedule, um, do we know how long, much longer the flashing yellow would take? Maybe once both of those are kind of done? We, we should know soon. I, I don't know exact schedule from Wayne. Uh, okay. You know, I, I, I know he's been in contact. I know he's tried to schedule uh, another site meeting. Um, okay. So it's, it's in the works. I, we don't meet again until March 3rd or 5th, the first Monday in March. I don't know if that's too early. Uh, well, it may, it may be too early for us to get together. Um, there's, there's school vacation uh, between now and then. And um, there's a as, as, too. As, as a group and come up with a concept. And, um, it, it may be a little too early. Okay. 
So maybe our next meeting would be a few weeks after that, probably. <laughs> I think two weeks after. I'm pretty sure the board meets twice in March. Okay, so we could so shoot for late March, mid March, mid to late March. So the seventeenth we can the escrow funds expire at the end of March two thousand fourteen. So I think we'd have to look into whether or not we can extend that deadline with the developers. Yeah, I'll do that consent. right away. I'll okay. do that right away. And if uh, we can't, then we may have to force a decision on ourselves earlier. Right. And I'll let everyone know. Yeah, out. let Wayne know too, since he's looking into the flashing yellow, that there may be a deadline. He knows that there's a deadline. Okay. But uh, I'll, I'll let him know that we can extend it a little. As you look into that, will you also find the contact of who we would contact if we wanted to pursue the, For also. the chicane? Okay. okay. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you also for coming back row there. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate you being here. It's an important intersection. It is. It really is, yeah. I'm there all the time. <laughs> I'm usually walking. It's <laughs> okay. I still don't want to get hit. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. I think it would be great if they could swing it. Not that exciting. Not like Monica. I take that much. You know what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a little. Like it, it, it will divert you enough to slow you down. You know the actual yeah, turn. Oh, thanks so much. I know. Is that all it is? Thank you. You're giving me a touch wild. Take care, Carol. Bruce, take care. Thank you, Rich. Okay, so our next. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's a hard so our next item is the 2014 warrant articles relating to the zoning bylaw. And I think yeah. Carol's going to sure. speak to us about that a little bit. Uh, you recall uh, that uh, there is a need to have a zoning bylaw amendment to cite medical marijuana treatment centers. and. Uh, right now, we, we do not have a dispensary, but we do have to um, adopt a bylaw um, uh, amendment because we had a moratorium at a town meeting last year that anticipated that the board, uh, rather that town meeting, would um, adopt something once the state issued its regulations, which it did do um, last year. So the zoning enforcement officer and the town manager and the director of Health and Human Services for the town, and town council and I met to discuss how, uh, what zoning district and so on, how it could be handled. So we're um, going to propose that the language for the board's vote um, add a definition for medical marijuana treatment center and um, locate the um, use in the B3 and the B5 district would you mind um, bringing that board back up, please? And I can show the board um, where B3 and B5 are. So, if you don't mind, I'll end up here. B, um, upside down, B3 is the brown, the brown districts. And that's village business. Carol, is the one on the wall bigger? I need you. Or is that old? No, nope, that's not old. That's that's because maybe good the idea. camera could Very zoom in on idea. that yep. also. Sure. Yeah, E three and B five. And so B two B three is the dark brown. That's village business district. So it would be the heights, the center where you see the brown, the dark brown. And here, as well as B5, which is the dark magenta. I call it the bow tie of Arlington Center. See the bow tie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or, or propeller. But in any event, it's the dark. Um, the central B, business. B, that's right. That's right. The central business district is just right here. 
So that's where um, we're contemplating having the zoning districts where they would be allowed by special permit through environmental design review through the board. So this is marathon, basically. Well, Melrose and capital. marathon through winter past lake. The capital, yeah, capital district. Capital district. Capital district. Capital district, Arlington Center, and Arlington Heights. The three, the three main commercial centers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Carol, and, oh, okay. in last year's version of this uh, bylaw, there was only one zone district that was identified. That's right. And I'm trying to remember if that was B3 or B5. Or I think it was B5. B5 is my was recollection. It, it was all in one area, and all the B5s in the center, right? That's right. Yeah, it was B5, I think. So why two districts this year? Uh, There are commercial districts. There were um, some. The idea is that, like not to limit the the use and not to restrict it. These are also these are the commercial areas. It's um, it's unlikely that we would have more than one in Arlington. Mm -hmm. um, I think last year there was some feedback that by having it in only one district and one. Um, one zoning district, one commercial district, that it, it seemed restrictive. Mm -hmm. So this way there's one in each center also. There's That's an area right. where it could be in each center. And in other respects, it's very similar to what was proposed last year. Um, Special permit, environmental design review through the, uh, through the uh, ARB. And this would, um, the uh, public hearing is the first meeting in March. So you're going to send us all of the, the language before Some that? Some draft language, yeah. Some draft language. Tell me again who was on the committee, or tell us again. Mike Fern, mm -hmm. uh, Zoning Enforcement Officer. Christine Bongiorno, the uh, Director of Health and Human Services for the town. Uh, town Council, Doug Cohen. Town Manager. Input from Chief Ryan, and myself. What was Chief Ryan's input? How did he feel about the B5 and the B3? I can't remember verbatim. Um, he wasn't, I, I think he gave input, but was not at the last uh, discussion that the group had. Um, you know, he's not happy about it because it's still, uh, you know, against federal law. Um, it still conflicts with federal law. And it's, it really poses a challenge for, um, a real contradiction for law enforcement. But he recognizes that it's state law, and as far as the location is, is he happier to have it in B three and B five versus just B five? Are there reasons, safety wise, that that makes more sense? To, or he wants it in he wants it in the centers and in the commercial areas. It, it's highly better that it, areas. It, he recognizes that it's better to have it in an area where there's activity rather than having it um, in an industrial area. Right. When um, several years ago when the law changed about how adult entertainment could be cited, people thought, well, I know, we'll put it in an industrial district and, and hide it. The thinking is different with this. At least we, we thought it, would, it, it shouldn't be treated that way. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, it normalizes it. The, the, the Massachusetts regulations were very carefully drafted, in my opinion. Um, I think they had the benefit of learning from California and Colorado um, to, and I feel like encoded in their regs are ways to make it, um, or to keep it from being glamorized, mm -hmm. and to keep it from becoming a recreational commodity, and to keep it as the law intended um, which is for medicinal use. 
and it was felt that to have it in the commercial districts is consistent with that. Just reading through the signage requirements that the state has. I remember last time yep. um, we all looked at the signage requirements and decided we didn't need to draft they're any able new to ones go for Arlington. Much farther than right. zoning could ever go. Right. Mm -hmm. Controlling the signage. Right. Yeah, and they were really controlling it, so that was impressive. I agree. I thought the regulations were quite thoughtful. Okay. So do you anticipate that we'll be seeing a draft? Um, draft vote? Yeah, um, by our next meeting? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the warrant closed Friday. I do not have additional zoning bylaw amendments if any were filed. The um, zoning bylaw amendments are supposed to be submitted to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Selectmen is supposed to convey them to the ARB. So as soon as that happens, I'll let the board know what else was filed. I. I know you um, saw an, an early draft of a 10 registered voter article from John Belskis increasing the um, amount of affordable housing in our inclusionary voter bylaw. I believe that he did submit a final version of that. I don't have that. But so that if, if he did, I, that would be part of the, the hearing? You Yes, that's right. You would have to have a, um, anything that was submitted um, before the warrant closed the way it was on zoning bylaw and then that you'd have to work here you'll have um, draft language from us on anything that was submitted okay and John will be there too or somebody will be there to represent their yes. Warren article mm -hmm. okay. I'm saying yes I don't know if he I think I gave if him the date I know I gave him the date of the public hearing Yeah, I think, I mean, this may be an obvious point, but I think at times when it's not a uh, uh, warrant article that is being sponsored by the ARB, um, the public or, or the sponsors may not understand that they really need to make the presentation. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, I, I guess last year I was thinking with the affordable housing, it, it did, I, I guess the sponsor did speak, or his, his son spoke, but um, you know, I think there's a perception that if we're all having a hearing that we are the sponsor of it, which mm -hmm. isn't necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. But with the, um, the add-on to the housing, not the affordable housing, the, the Correct. Well, last year it was, uh, I was given the example last year about the um, accessory. Accessory apartments, yeah. that's it. Make sure that the um, sponsors understand that okay. that dynamic. I'm sure they get it. It's always good to mention it. The board deserves that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our last agenda item, item, I think now, is the approval of minutes. We have the January 13th, 2014 minutes. So this means we're up to date, right? On all the minutes. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. So. I don't know if everybody needs a minute to read these, if you saw them, email before you came. Mm -hmm. did, did everybody get to see them once? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to start first, if you have I any have comments? I have one, uh, I have two things. At uh, the top of page two, where the, the vote, um, where it says that I move to approve the draft article with the condition that the chair or director may later be titled. And I think that should be made change the title mm -hmm. to include registered marijuana dispensary. That's right. Okay. And then my other comment is really a question on page one, maybe about three quarters down the page. You know, we're talking about the escrow for the conservation stewardship. Add back the thirty thousand dollar escrow for conservation stewardship to the land disposition agreement and um, I th think it would help to have a little bit more context unless I'm just unless it relates to the paragraph right above it I, I don't know if it does but so Ms. Kowalski would look into to, to check to, if the escrow can be released back to the town 
and then add back the $30,000 escrow for conservation stewardship. Isn't that, th those are two different escrows, aren't they? Because the first escrow, the paragraph right above it with the LSP, mm -hmm. is for uh, the environmental uh, damage with the oil at the site. Right. right, and that was a significant escrow account that could not come back. To could the be town. released to the town. Yeah. And then the $30,000 escrow for conservation stewardship, Christine, you will probably know this better than I do, but that is, is that for the oversight of the conservation area in the um, yes. the Sims Woods. Yes, right? the annual walkthroughs, check the boundaries, check the signage. And then there's another 10,000 added onto that. Okay, so I, I'm wondering why this is in here because I didn't think that had ever gone away. It hadn't. Okay. Did we, were, were we talking about it last time? I'm just looking through the notes from the meeting to see the context for that we were looking through the matrix when we went over all these items. Oh. So it was printed. Maybe matrix it was missing item. from the matrix and it just needed Oh, to be the line, right. The line was missing from okay. the Excel spreadsheet. I had an old copy and I saw it online. So you want to add the the um, row back into the matrix. That's what you meant. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> add the that. row for the 30,000 escrow for conservation stewardship to the LDA back into the matrix at the missing row, maybe you could say. Okay. Perfect. Okay, that's all I have. And how about if we go down two more performance bond completion escrow? That's kind of hanging there too. Do we say something about that on the matrix? Whether there were two, we were talking about whether there's two performance bonds. Mm -hmm. Or one, and that was up above. I know we talked about the affidavits that everybody has to sign. Maybe that was supposed to be there. We talked about the... The um, notes just say performance, bond, completion, escrow. I was hoping someone might have some contacts for that. If it was really important, one of us would remember it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're coming it. back to the matrix again, yeah. too. Yeah. So. I, think, I would just suggest striking it. Just strike I'll, it I'll check it. the matrix, and if I see something, I'll let you know. Okay. If it was something you were supposed to check on. or. Okay. There's a typo just below it. Board then moved, well, maybe not, then moved to the proposed draft board. Okay. There is a typo on the very top, absent. Oh. And Andrew was not absent. Because I was yeah. not absent. Andrew was Thank here. Thank you. In fact, he actually abstained from the vote later. <laughs> That's how I realized you were. From the meeting, I was absent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which we got right last time, I think. Did you see anything else on that, Andrew? Uh, just on the, about halfway down the page, it says, Jay Gupton of Arlington 360 discussed the performance bond placed at the closing. I just, would it make sense to have placed actually change to put in place at the closing? Sure. Mm -hmm. Andrew, do you see anything? No, I think I'm all set. Somewhere in here, and I, I can't find it now. We were going to learn something, and I thought that word was a little bit hard to understand. It's on page two, a large sentence. The board asked Ms. Kowalski to learn from the town engineer the plan and full budget. It's a little clumsy. To the board asked Ms. Kowalski to find out. find out, yeah, that's what I was thinking, from the town engineer. Do you see where we are, Carol? Uh -huh. That's the only other thing I saw. 
And that you had encouraged the board to attend the ALT meeting. You could add that, but it's not very substantial. But since you have that I encouraged the board to attend the January 16th presentation of the land use, I think you also encouraged the board to attend the ALT annual meeting for the Community Preservation Act. It was a great meeting, by the way. Very informative. Both of them were good. And there is one more. I can make a plug for the land use working group. <laughs> or for the master planning committee. They're again having a land use um, discussion, land use working paper discussion. What's well, their big discussion as a committee this Thursday at 7 o'clock? So if anybody wants to sit in on that, for what that discussion is. It's a shame those aren't televised. Well, the land use one will was the presentation was recorded for was later it? playback. Oh, yeah. good. So you could watch that if you didn't make it to that one. Yeah. And yeah. the public facilities working papers um, expected this week. Great. So that's one to watch for. Great. Yeah, I'm interested to see the committee's discussion on the land use paper. It's an important one. It is. It's a shame it's the first one that came up in a way. I know. Uh, I, I, I think they'll have to revisit it once the other elements are available. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Okay. Would you like to say aye also? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One technicality. Okay. Okay. So, I think that's all our business. Unless somebody has something else they want to bring up. Our next meeting isn't until March. We're not having the February 24th fourth meeting. meeting. At this moment, we do not have February 24th, but try to keep it open. Try to keep okay. it open? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. One last motion. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're adjourned.